Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Hard Knocks Fighting TV. My name is Ryan Valentine alongside Ari Tobe, the President and CEO of the Hard Knocks Fighting Championship and we're set to bring you some of the best up and coming MMA fighters that you're going to see here in the Hard Knocks cage. Next up a fight between Josh Griffin and Justin Schmidt and both these guys are heavy strikers. Absolutely. Josh Griffin's had a lot of karate and, and striking fights. And um, Schmidt, uh, ex-hockey enforcer, definitely a stand-up guy. This fight's going to be a war, and I think there's going to be a KO. So here it comes, Justin Schmidt getting set to take on Josh Griffin. This school of hard knocks fight is a professional bout in the 185 pound division and is brought to you by Scott Safety Supply Services. And now, let's meet the fighters. So now to the professional ranks as we see Josh Griffin coming down to the cage. And uh, you look at uh, Josh Griffin coming in has been working on his abilities on the ground to try and balance things out. So it, it, hopefully that uh, he's able to uh, show off his more well-rounded game as he shows off the ground and the striking of his karate. Yeah, and uh, we, we saw him in a fight not long ago against Jeff Porter where he dominated for 14 minutes and 53 seconds before falling to a rear naked choke and uh, really held the edge against an opponent that couldn't even stand to do a post-fight interview when he was done. He had to hang on the cage. So jo Josh Griffin, happy to take it out of his opponent. And his opponent. And now we get to see Justin Schmidt, the former hockey enforcer with his brother in his corner who lost earlier this evening. A, uh, a last, uh, his last amateur bout a three, four minute round fight uh, in, elsewhere in the world of MMA. And so he feels like he's prepared to step in the cage and move to five minute rounds. Says the nicest thing about turning professional, Jeremy, is all of a sudden you're undefeated again. Well, and, and that's what we have mentioned many times before. Uh, with your an amateur career, as long as you are learning something from an amateur fight, that is a victory because your amateur fight and record disappears. As we look at the tail of the tape here, as both fighters uh, stand pretty close in height, 5'11 for Justin Schmidt, 5'10 for Josh Griffin, Griffin. Griffin, two years older and with two fights of professional experience, although two losses, Ryan. Now, we mentioned earlier that his younger brother fought on the card, and again, both of them showing up in suits today, full suit, full tie, knowing that as a former hockey player, that's what he needed to do to feel ready for an athletic competition. He needed to show up in a suit. Said he'd shown up in a warm-up outfit once before, and it just didn't feel right for him. He felt off both physically and mentally because he hadn't prepared in the way that he does wearing the full suit in today. Well, and again, Justin Schmidt coming out of the MMA University. Uh, they've got a lot of fighters on the card here tonight, and uh, he is ready and set. And uh, again, we are under the professional, full unified rules, three five-minute rounds, starting off tonight with Justin Schmidt and Josh Griffin. So Justin Schmidt's brother fought earlier on the card, said he could worry more about the coaches taking care of him so he could focus on his fight and we will hear now the official introductions in the center of the cage with Jay Nance. And now, the official Hard Knocks Fighter introductions. In the blue corner for Bill 360, he's 0-2 as a professional, 29 years old, and stands 5 feet 10 inches tall. He weighed in at 185 pounds. Fighting out of PMA Karate from Calgary, please welcome Hard Knocks fighter, Josh Dirty Dog Griffin! And in the red corner for Pete the Plumber, the hero of plumbing, it's his professional debut. He's 27 years old and stands five feet, 10 inches tall. 
He weighed in at 186 pounds, fighting out of MMA University from Calgary. Please welcome Hard Knocks fighter, Justin Schmidt! This bout will be contested under professional rules. The referee in charge of the Hard Knocks action is Mr. Brian Beauchamp. Brian Beauchamp in charge of the action as Josh Griffin and Justin Schmidt both look to get their first amateur career victory or their first professional career victories, excuse me. And uh, Schmidt will come out of the red corner in the blue trunks. Out of the blue corner in the red trunks is uh, Josh Griffin. Couldn't help us out a little bit there. Switch sides. Nice light kick there. Uh, starting it off by Justin Schmidt. And Schmidt, again, we've seen him in some absolute wars here in the Hard Knocks cage. We know he can take a punch, and he can throw one too, as evidence there. A nice knee to the head there of Josh Griffin, getting in close, getting in tight, and maybe taking away some of that ability to strike with the karate from Josh Griffin. Well, you take away a striker's face, and uh, you're going to have an advantage, and that is what Justin Schmidt is doing, uh, pushing his opponent up in the cage, and we'll see if he works for the takedown here. Shoulder to the head, and again, looking for the single leg. Has the single leg, now picks up his opponent, gets him to the ground, but doesn't secure the full takedown. Yeah, we talked about earlier about securing a single leg and then going to a double, and that's what Justin Schmidt should do to continue and get the takedown, just like he did right there, one minute in, and there's the takedown. Schmidt now has Griffin down. Trying to work through has passed in, but Griffin does have control of Schmidt's head at this point as it's on the side of his body. Going to keep working up though and trying to get into maybe a side control, but Griffin fighting his way out of that temporarily. Very calm and relaxed is are both fighters, Justin Schmidt and Josh Griffin, uh, waiting to get this position to a point where they can try and take advantage of it. Uh, you've got to look that Josh Griffin's going to try and wall walk with his back up there and try and get back to a standing position. Justin Schmidt going to do everything he can to keep that from happening. Continuing to hold him down. Although not much work being done from Schmidt here either, Jeremy, just doing a good job of, of securing that cage control, but Griffin having to expend a lot of energy to get out of it and look for another takedown here as he's got him up off his feet, but is unable to kind of make that turn and slam him to the ground. Well, and there's something to be said about these big lifts that uh, Justin Schmidt is doing, and are, I don't know if they're really necessary if you're not gonna really secure a good solid takedown. All it is is just gonna wear you out and uh, you hear uh, some chanting in the crowd for Josh Griffin uh, out of PMA Karate here in Calgary. Schmidt again has Griffin up against the cage, now starting to throw a couple knees. And again, both fighters very familiar with striking, way up off the ground and slamming with authority. Justin Schmidt now with an emphatic takedown. Yeah, and now that's more of what we were talking about earlier, where if you're going to pick your opponent up, make sure it's a big, strong takedown. And uh, as you see now, Josh Griffin settling in. He's got a fairly lazy guard on, but a guard nonetheless. And uh, again, you see Justin Schmidt trying to work in, trying to land these strikes. Now Schmidt on top, trying to continue to work. Griffin doing a good job of limiting the damage so far, but but Jeremy, at this point, it's gotta be Schmidt's round with still a minute and a half to go. But Schmidt's been on top when they've been on the ground and up against the cage, it's been Schmidt with a dominant position. Minute 30 seconds remains now. Still on top is Justin Schmidt as he's trying to work in, trying to land effective strikes. And he is starting to land them here, posturing up, but uh, gotta watch that up kick as uh, Josh Griffin can use those powerful legs to cause a lot of damage if he catches the chin of Justin Schmidt. Schmidt now back in the guard, trying to pass. Momentarily had, but Griffin gets back. And again, both fighters not doing much in the way, Jeremy, of, of necessarily dynamic offense, but still landing punches from this position. 
and Schmidt now posturing up, trying to find a hole, trying to find it past the legs of Griffin, and nice punch there. A couple nice strikes from the top here. Justin Schmidt grabbing onto Griffin, but Griffin, again, a veteran of karate tournaments and karate fights throughout, certainly has the chin to take it. Less than 30 seconds remains as jo Justin Schmidt continues to punish Josh Griffin. Uh, we don't see any noticeable cuts or scrapes at this point, but the referee now, Brian Beauchamp, gonna stand them up, so we're gonna have a pretty exciting finish here to round one, as now we see the kicks come from Josh Griffin, and both swinging for the fence. It's a nice short elbow by Griffin, lands right on the jaw of Justin Schmidt. Yeah, it was a nice, finish from Griffin to get out and kind of show some offense there at the end of round one. Round one landed two nice kicks, Jeremy, but uh, Justin Schmidt surviving those and we'll wait for round number two. Now it was one and a half minutes in the amateur. It's only one minute now as uh, both fighters get a chance to rest. Three five minute rounds, full unified rules. We are live at the Century Casino here in the Hard Knocks Fighting Championship cage. As we look at a replay here by FeatureProductions.ca, this is the original takedown and a nice knee to the, the chin there by Justin Schmidt. Yeah, probably the best strike of round number one as uh, he secures the knee and uh, would end up getting that into a takedown eventually and spend the majority of the round in top position. A, uh, a nice first round as a professional for Justin Schmidt. Josh Griffin, of course, will need to come out a little stronger in round two. He'll uh, obviously, Jeremy, be looking to stand up in this one. Well, and just from that short time that we watched Josh Griffin uh, get to use that stand up, he was very effective. So uh, Justin Schmidt will most likely want to take this one to the ground. They touch gloves and Griffin comes out kicking. And again, Schmidt tries to tie him up inside and get close. Looks like Griffin trying to secure a takedown there, Jeremy, but Schmidt not having anything to do with it. On good position there for Justin Schmidt. Griffin now has Schmidt up against the cage. They have an opposite from round number one. And good defense here shown by Josh Griffin, extending himself up, making it so it's very difficult for Justin Schmidt to pick him up. Uh, to get that position, you need to be bent over as it is right now, but as soon as he straightens up, it makes it very hard to uh, get that elevation. And uh, now a single leg, and coming off the cage is Josh Griffin, but uh, that's something that uh, he immediately retreats to after he realizes it's better there. Yeah, the guillotine was there momentarily but doesn't come through. Now elbows to the side of the head of Justin Schmidt, and that certainly will cause him to move a little bit. And again, trying to secure that double leg, trying to squeeze his knees together at this point, Jeremy, probably looking for another slam here as he tries to get him up against the cage, and it looks like they're gonna get stood up again. Well, Brian Beauchamp is, uh, has no patience, <laughs> it seems today, for any sort of uh, laying around. So anytime that the action is slowing down, Beauchamp is calling them, and there's some good striking from both guys. And again, to the legs is Justin Schmidt, but he needs to be able to finish this one, and he does now. And uh, we'll see if he can get to work here. He's got three minutes to work with. Schmidt on top of Griffin. Griffin tying him up. Schmidt looked like he took a bit of a breather there, wasn't uh, wasn't reacting, but uh, now is postured up and now some nice punches to the ribs of Josh Griffin. And we saw a fight end earlier tonight with a shot to the body. And Justin Schmidt doing what he can to maybe duplicate those results by throwing big shots to the body here. Well, he needs to be patient. He needs to try and isolate an arm and get it out of the way so he can land some strikes. And that's what he's trying to do as he swings around to side control. And uh, as he does, if he is able to trap one of those arms down, he'll be able to land some significant strikes. So we'll see what happens here with two minutes and 23 seconds remaining in the second round of this scheduled three round fight. A nice punch there from Schmidt down onto Griffin. And now he's got his back. We'll see what he can do there. A nice scramble from Griffin, but now winds up in the mount. And Justin Schmidt's gonna be looking to unload here. He's gonna drop down elbows on Griffin. El 
Griffin gives up his back, but a nice transition spins into now a half guard on top. Well, and there's something to be said about, uh, again, we talk about uh, combat intelligence and some nice strikes being landed here by Josh Griffin from the top, and now he's got a mount, and uh, we'll see what he can do from it. But now his working on an Americana, unable to get it. Now on the back is Josh Griffin. So good continuity in the jiu-jitsu shown by Josh Griffin. Taking the back and looking for the rear naked choke here as he keeps trying to find a spot, pushes that head forward, trying to dig under the neck. But nice two-on-one defense from Eric Schmidt. But those hooks are in. Josh Griffin doing a good job here with two straight jiu-jitsu losses to start his MMA career. Maybe trying to get one of those back here as he looks for the choke. Tries the face wash to pull off the face and get it in. Some big kicks to the midsection. And one of those was low. Yeah, right in the not, I don't enjoy getting kicked there spots. Yeah, that was not, uh, not the best placed kick from Josh Griffin. And I'm sure Eric Schmidt would agree but he's going to have and as Justin much Schmidt as... in the cage. Eric Schmidt yes, outside. Eric Schmidt, Eric Schmidt would agree. Yes. Uh, Justin Schmidt felt it, and, and as a result, uh, needs to take time before he can agree. Well, and this is nothing but positive for Justin Schmidt because you talk about his, his background as a hockey player. Hockey is very much an anaerobic activity, and so you go really hard, really hard for it, and it looks like they're taking away a point, uh, which I think is... Well, that's a little premature. Uh, no warning. I, I think it might have maybe been more than one kick. Uh, we'll wait to see if we can get a replay on it in between rounds. But uh, it may have been more than one kick to the groin. Uh, from here, of course, it looked like a kick to the midsection, but uh, we were unable to tell, so uh, that could end up being why the point was deducted. But after a first round that saw his opponent dominate, and now, at best, he'll look at a draw for this round and possibly be down two points. That's a devastating point to lose for Josh Griffin. Yeah, unfortunately, at this point, unless he's able to finish Justin Schmidt, he's fighting for a draw. And uh, that's got to be very, uh, very disheartening, although it doesn't look like it's affected his game much. You look at Justin Schmidt pushing against the cage, and uh, less than 30 seconds remains here. But uh, again, we talked about the anaerobic systems of Justin Schmidt. That short recovery is going to reset his muscles in the way that he used them for playing hockey all those all those years, and uh, it's nothing to his or nothing but to his advantage. Less than 10 seconds remaining. Elbows coming from Josh Griffin to the midsection of Justin Schmidt, and they will separate. We'll see if we can get that replay. Maybe find out why the point was deducted. I'm being told we will see it here shortly, but uh, a, a nasty point deduction for Josh Griffin, who now knows that he needs to finish this fight in order for it to be over and in order for him to win, uh, knowing that he's likely now down a round at least. And uh, we will see here on the replay, hopefully, uh, well, we're gonna get a real good look at this here. And uh, I apologize for anybody who's going to see it, but we may see, uh, some, some deep kicks. Oh, it looks like we kicked over, and well, the, it must have been the first one that was low, but the other two certainly went to the ribs, and it uh, looks like. And that's why I, I, I have some, I got a feel for Josh Griffin here on getting a point taken away for what would only be an accidental blow. Yeah, it, seemed, it, it seems like it might have been a bit of an overreaction there, but nevertheless, uh, Josh Griffin has to deal with that point being deducted, and he's going to have to now battle for uh, a potentially a draw, and, and if he can win the third round, comes away with a big spin kick, but got caught with a right hand from Justin Schmidt, who's unloading up against the cage, trying to finish this one, and trying to have it be a, a definitive answer as to who won this fight, and a nice takedown there. Well, and it was a nice takedown, and uh, again, you talk about those anaerobic systems, you get about 30 seconds of hard action and then you have to take a rest. And this is a good way for, uh, for Justin Schmidt to go. Come out hard, do some damage, take him down and rest on the ground. But a very nice sweep 
by Josh Griffin. And now Josh Griffin will look for the finish, which is his only chance to really win this fight, as we're pretty sure that uh, the best he can get is a draw. Big elbows coming there from Griffin. Griffin laying punches, Schmidt surviving and getting out. Maybe a triangle here, fights to get that second arm in. A nice work there from Schmidt to get that other arm in and get himself out of that very dangerous position, Jeremy. Excellent job, and uh, again, you talk about positioning over power. If Josh Griffin take that time to, instead of land those extra shots, take that time, get some position, he might not have got turned over, but you look here now, Justin Schmidt getting to work and uh, a little bit of uh, ear clap. Uh, I've, I've seen it in video games and movies. Uh, Andre the Giant and Princess Bride comes to mind, but uh, it's uh, it effective, I guess. Griffin still trying to strike from the bottom as Schmidt gets over, one arm out now. Griffin will try and lay this out and the arm bar is in there, whether or not he can turn it in time. Schmidt taps, Griffin wins. This fight is over with an arm bar victory by Josh Griffin. And uh, Justin Schmidt does not look uh, like he's in, uh, he's in pretty discomforting pain right now and his arm is definitely broken. Um, you can see there, there is a swell right on it, so Definitely broken yeah, or he's, out of place. He's looking at his forearm. It's broken. Yeah, it's uh, not a good shot. And uh, again, the, the toughness cannot be questioned here by Justin Schmidt uh, to get back up. But uh, yeah, definitely that arm is not in good shape. Uh, and, it, uh, it may not be broken after all as it's swinging around quite a bit. He doesn't seem to be favoring it. But it certainly looks like there's something going on on the forearm of Justin Schmidt there, so we, look we go the to the replay. final replay here. And uh, he'll secure this uh, arm bar and uh, a very good angle here as we get to look at the pressure that was being put on by Josh Griffin. And uh, it was at this point here where he really hipped in and uh, as soon as he was able to get that thumb pointing up, uh, there it is, a little bit of extra and uh, that is a lot of pressure on that elbow. So an excellent job for Josh Griffin pulling past the adversity he had with the point deduction. And uh, we will have the official decision in the center of the cage with Jay Denance. We have the official Shaw GMC Tough Trucks Hard Knocks 32 decision brought to you by Scott Safety Supply and Services. The winner by tap out due to armbar at one minute and 48 seconds in the third round in the blue corner, Josh Dirty Dog Griffin. So Ari, not a finish we expected from Josh Griffin. The karate fighter gets a submission win getting a, a very tough opponent to tap the mat after an armbar. Wasn't that a great fight? I, I, I really impressed with Josh Griffin. I think he's been he's been known as a striker for a long time and, and he comes in the last couple of fights and, and all he's doing is striking it and he, he got you know abused a little bit on the ground and to see him get a submission is really fantastic. He's improving his game and, and congratulations, I love it. So Josh Griffin picks up the first win of his professional mixed martial arts career with an armbar victory over Justin Schmidt. To find out more about Hard Knocks Fighting and upcoming Hard Knocks events, please visit hardknocksfighting.com. Next up, a fight between Rolando Suspedes and Dia Grant. Now, Ari, Dia Grant, no stranger to the Hard Knocks cage. Suspedes just making his second appearance here. What can we expect from this fight? I think this is going to be a very interesting fight. I think Dia Grant's a very good athlete. I think he's a better athlete than Mark Maruz, who uh, Suspedes beat uh, last time we saw him here. And so I think Dia is going to move around a lot, and we're going to see really uh, whether Rolando. Uh, is is the athlete that we think he is. Um, if Rolando um, toys with Dia, then he's the real deal. 
Um, I think stand up, it'll be a war. And I think if it goes to the ground, the guy who gets on top is going to win. So there it is. Next up, we've got Dia Grant taking on Rolando Cespedes. This school of hard knocks fight is a professional bout in the 150 pound division and is brought to you by Cruise Custom Homes. And now, let's meet the fighters. So now we see Rolando Cespedes. We saw him at the last Hard Knocks event here in Calgary fighting against Mark Marouge. Yeah, and Dia Grant is a tough opponent, of course. Uh, Dia has 15 fights on his professional career. Uh, by far, Rolando says, the most experienced fighter he's ever, fight, he's ever fought. And so he's looking to come out and get the, the quick finish because, of course, Dia Grant, the, the later the fight goes on, that may continue to give him a, a more of an advantage when it comes to cage experience with 15 fights versus five. Well, and again, Dia Grant has been a resurgent Dia Grant. He started off, he was down, he's two and five, and rattled off victory after victory after victory. And so you start two and five, and when you're seven and eight now, that means you've gone five and three in your last fights, and Dia Grant doesn't fight easy guys. And his opponent. So now we will see Dia Grant, who we've seen in the Hard Knocks cage several times in the past, coming down to a set of dynamic mixed martial arts in Calgary. And uh, both fighters weighing in at 150 pounds for this fight. And uh, since we saw him last, he's had two other fights outside of the Hard Knocks cage with a win and a loss, and, and says he's, he's looking to get his record back to 500, but that winning each individual fight is more important than having an overall record of above 500. Well, and again, we talked about his, his not as good of start when it comes to his professional record, but uh, as putting in a, a, an impressive, uh, a impressive streak here. As we look at the tail of the tape here, 29 years old, his suspend is 26 for Dia Grant, so still very young with that many fights. Everything else is very much the same, uh, but you look, 15 fights to four uh, for Dia Grant, a big advantage when it comes to experience. Yeah, and that should have said three and two with a, uh, a professional record as uh, the last one coming off a loss um, for Rolando Suspedes. That one happening uh, just a few weeks ago, but no injuries to speak of for Suspedes. No suspensions are to worry about. But at the end of the day, Dia Grant, the far more experienced fighter, the last time we saw him here in the Hard Knocks cage, he suffered an elbow uh, to the face from Aaron Gallant that cost him. Uh, a win in that fight as uh, he ended up losing that fight to Aaron Glenn was was not necessarily able to continue much after taking that elbow to the to the eye and uh, didn't break anything but nevertheless still caused enough damage to cause him to lose that fight. Well, and uh, I'm speaking with his coaches in the past. He said there's two Dia Grants. There's the Dia Grant who was not committed and then there's scary Dia Grant. And uh, I asked him when he came in today which Dia Grant was here. And he said, I'm frightened. It's, if he's frightened, I don't know how to feel out here outside the cage. But before the official introductions, we'll head inside the cage to Jaden Ants. And now, the official Hard Knocks Fighter introductions. In the blue corner for Bill 360. He's three and one as a professional, 29 years old, and stands five feet, seven inches tall. He weighed in at 149 and one half pounds. Fighting out of Fight Syndicate team and Tompkins MMA from Las Vegas, please welcome Hard Knocks fighter, Rolando Cepedes. And in the red corner for Pete the Plumber, the hero of plumbing. He's seven and eight as a professional, 25 years old and stands five feet, eight inches tall. He weighed in at 150 pounds, fighting out of dynamic MMA from Calgary. Please welcome Hard Knocks fighter, Dia Puff Daddy Grant. 
This bout will be contested under professional rules. The referee in charge of the Hard Knocks action is Mr. Adam Cheadle. Adam Cheadle, our referee, as we get set for this professional matchup, Rolando Suspedes getting set to take on Dia Grant. Grant coming out of the red corner in the black trunks, the camo trunks out of the blue corner for Suspedes, and we are underway here in this fight. Big strikes early, a huge fight. Big strikes landed from Suspedes. Dia Grant closing the distance and taking him up against the cage. Well, and he said that in his fight with Aaron Gallant, he got stuck with an elbow and that affected him. But he's right in here now. He doesn't seem to be affected by those punches, although they landed with authority. Yeah, Rolando Suspedes, a nice set of punches to open this fight. But Dia Grant doing a nice bit of damage up against the cage with the knees and has now secured a takedown. Excellent throw by Dia Grant, if not interrupted by the cage grab by Suspedes. But Dia Grant in a very good position here to work from side control. He's going to want to look to isolate one of the, the close arm so he can land strikes with that left arm of his. Suspedes trying to explode out, but Grant in there. Now Suspedes with the full guard. Grant trying to posture up. Suspedes trying to find an arm. Now has a one has an arm bar in there. It's whether or not he can pop it loose from the other arm. Dia Grant doing a nice job posturing out, protecting that elbow or that arm and, and really keeping that grip locked. It's important when you get yourself in a position where your arm is isolated, you need to stack your opponent and push down immediately. And then you need to wait until you feel the ability for your arm to pull out. Excellent technique by Dia Grant coming out of dynamic MMA, and now let's see what he can do from this top position. Grant continuing to land strikes from the top. Body, body, head as called by his coaches. And those last few going straight to the head. Coach is calling for an elbow, but hasn't able, been able to land one yet. Suspedes brings him back down in a full mount. Dia Grant is on top and looking to get it done here with another nice punch, he's securing him. Those hooks are in. Suspedes is in trouble here, Jeremy, as Dia Grant on his back and doing everything he can to soften him up and look for that choke. Well, and we saw what Rolando Suspedes did in his last fight here in the Hard Knocks cage, and you're seeing Dia Grant almost dismantle him. So when we said scary Dia Grant was here, we meant it. Well, Dia Grant doing an excellent job so far. Some nice defense from Suspedes there. Rolled him out, looked for the choke. Suspedes didn't give him the choke. Grant rolls out of it, looking to try it again. And, and, and some good patience there, not wearing out his arms, not fighting off, and, and trying to find rolling into the choke. But again, some nice defense here from Suspedes, despite Dia Grant being on his back. Well, and Dia Grant's last fight, uh, we're seeing him on the top and what he can work with his jiu-jitsu. His last fight, he was getting thrown all over the cage by a fairly accomplished wrestler and was able to pop out an arm bar and really do some damage there. So Dia Grant showing in his last two fights, very good jiu-jitsu, very good control from both dominant positions and uh, submissive decisions. Nice takedown here by Grant and now working again for that rear naked choke. Yeah, Grant just pulling Suspedes down. And, and having his back, he's got the hooks in. Dia Grant has been in a fairly dominant position for the majority of this round so far. And with a minute 35 to go here in round number one, Dia Grant is doing very well uh, here against Rolando Suspedes. Less than a minute and a half remaining in round one. And again, just being patient here. There's lots of time remaining. You only need about 10 seconds once you've locked it in for uh, fighters to really think that they're in trouble. And uh, you look at Suspendis here, trying to isolate an arm, being able to turn inside the guard, and turning he is. He's almost out, and now he is out inside the guard of Dia Grant, so now Suspendis will get some work from the top. And Suspendis, we saw what he could do against Mark Marouge. And, and again, throwing the arm and uh, now it's Grant going for the arm bar, but Suspet is coming in with some big strikes from the top, Jeremy. Well, and that's the arm bar that was able to catch his last opponent. So uh, he, he is using it to his effect, but now Suspet is with about 40 seconds remaining, has some time to try and change the judges' minds in this round as to who won it. So far, it's going Dia Grant's way. Again, Suspet is now dropping punches on Dia Grant, 
Grant just covering up here, intelligently defending, but with 30 seconds left, there's a lot of time for Suspedes to work on top here, Jeremy. Yeah, and again, these are all things. They might not win the round because, again, Dia Grant spent a lot of time on top, but it will soften up Dia Grant for the second round as we have less than 10 seconds remaining by the sound of the clap. And, uh, again, a great first round by both these fighters. Yeah, both fighters really going at it here. And that's the end of round one as Rolando Suspedes and Dia Grant finish off the first round. Both fighters, Jeremy, doing good work from the dominant position. I think it might end up being a Dia Grant round, though, as there was more time on top for Dia Grant than there was for Suspedes, despite Suspedes landing some big damaging shots while on top. But again, it's all about effective striking and uh there was effective striking for both of these guys as we look at a feature of productions.ca replay. And this is uh, the turnover and working into the uh, rear naked choke as it's right close and personal to the camera. Yeah, and, and really uh, that choke was kind of deep on Suspedes, but he survived it. And uh, Dia Grant getting some advice from his coaches in the corner, making sure he's breathing properly as they get set to head out for round number two. Rolando Suspedes and Dia Grant looking to continue their hostilities here in the second of three potential rounds. A big big swing. swing from Suspedes. And Dia Grant ducks under that and secures a nice takedown. We're not brothers at all, hey? No. <laughs> Nice elbow there from Grant in tight. Again, landing strikes on Suspedes. This is where Dia Grant likes to work. He likes to push forward when that guard is a little loose. That's where he likes to strike from. And uh, again, trying to put the pressure forward, making sure to work on his positioning. Again, very important. You don't want to give up a bad position uh, for the sake of landing a heavy strike. And uh, you look here, this is a arm triangle or side choke from the bottom. It's very hard to tap a guy out from this, but it really does uh, limit uh, what the guy can do as well as uh, cut off a little bit of oxygen to the brain for a short time. Dia Grant pops out of it and answers with strikes. Very effective ground and pound from Grant. The up kick's coming. And again, trying to pull him into a potential submission here, Jeremy. Looks like just one arm in. It's whether or not Suspedes can get it around for the triangle. You can see him pulling his leg in and he's gonna have to pop that other leg over. We may have a triangle choke here. Dia Grant trying to pull out of it, but so far just, well, the other hand is just in there. And an excellent job to stack up by Dia Grant. And again, with the triangle, all you need to do is create a little bit of space to be able to make it so it's not effective. But this is the other danger. If you're not getting out of it, you're leaving your head exposed to those nasty elbows. We've seen a lot of fighters in the past get nasty cuts from those elbows in that position. Suspedes so tried to secure the triangle a little more and stack up Dia Grant, push him away but it was unable, he was unable to secure the triangle and Grant now back on top. Right here in front of us, Dia Grant landing nice punches as he continues to go forward. And again, very tough rounds to call because both fighters are having their time. Uh, Dia Grant spending the majority of the time on top, but when Suspedes is, is in a dominant position, he is really dominating. Still 2.45 to go in round number two. Dia Grant on top of Rolando Suspedes, a nice forearm elbow there. And again, Grant doing a good job, Jeremy, of punishing from the top. When he's in this position, he's throwing punches, he's landing punches to the face, and that, that will add up over time and, and help secure him a victory. When you look at Suspedes pushing away the hips, he's got a butterfly guard with his right leg, now switches to a transitional guard, but he keeps moving back and Dia Grant keeps no space in between the legs. So he is making sure that he can continue to be dominant, but while they've been on the ground right now, they've traveled almost a full circle around. As you see, Suspedes trying to shrimp out and uh, Dia Grant having nothing of it, keeping those thighs on thighs and uh, being able to continue raining down blows. 
Grant postures up now, lands a nice combination one-two, but again, has his arm caught out. Suspedis has an arm. It's whether or not he can secure it and lock it up. And a, a nice sequence of rolls here by Dia Grant to get out of that submission. A very good job there by both fighters transitioning, fighting for that arm bar, but Suspedis unable to keep it, and Dia Grant right back on top. Excellent display of jiu-jitsu here in the Hard Knocks cage as we try and bring the best talent we have to offer. And uh, you look now at this fight between Dia Grant and Rolando Suspedis. Pretty much has had all aspects of the game. Good striking, good jiu-jitsu, good wrestling. So it's uh, we'll see how this one plays out in the third round. But again, tough rounds to call for our judges. Dia Grant still on top. Suspedis busy from the bottom. Jeremy hasn't stopped throwing punches, hasn't stopped moving. And, and again, has tried submission attempts on several occasions here. And, and so far, so good though for Dia Grant, who spent the most of this round on top. And, and that's, that counts for something here in Calgary. If there's one thing we know, being on top is, is certainly a bonus point in the judges' eyes. Yeah, and again, with less than 30 seconds to go, a little bit of blood coming from uh, one of the athletes, probably Dia Grant, just by the positioning of it. But uh, you hear his corner saying, land one good blow in 20 seconds. Position yourself for one good blow in 20 seconds. And uh, again, very tough to call because you've seen Rolando Suspense be very effective throughout the round, but Dia Grant equally effective. So I don't think either fighter can be the guaranteed that they are up or down two rounds. Yeah, I think uh, at this point, the both corners, I mean, I, I think Dia Grant's corner is going to be a little more confident than Rolando Suspedes, uh, who uh, uh, a little trouble on, a, on the stool there as he gets words from uh, Daniel Garcia, who was in before. And uh, we'll look at that roll sequence here as Dia Grant escapes from an armbar attempt, but we see one roll over and then he rolls over and, and, and they roll again. He, he grabs the arm again and, and right back to it. Flips over the body, rolls out of it and keeps out of it. A very nice sequence there for both fighters uh, in trying to keep the arm bar and escaping the arm bar. Several escapes there required for Dia Grant to keep himself alive in this fight. Well, this is going to be a very interesting third round between these two fighters. It looked like Suspedis a little bit gassed, but Dia Grant was holding on to a side choke right at the end of that round, so maybe a little bit of a head rush as Suspedis was getting up, and you notice the wobble. And uh, again, we'll see. This is going to be a very interesting third round, as unlike other fights tonight, we have no idea who's winning this fight. Yeah, deep breaths, mouth open from Dia Grant in the corner before this round starts. But it doesn't seem to affect him early as he secures another takedown and works himself into a guard position. And we'll see what he can do from here. And again, trying that guard. And you know that uh, inevitably the, the, the attempt at an arm bar is coming. But uh, this time scrambling to his feet and blocking the head kicks to Spedis. Dia Grant again pulls, but this time a guillotine arm in and we'll see whether or not this is over and it is over Rolando Suspedes wins the fight by a guillotine choke Dia Grant falls a great win there for Rolando Suspedes and I think Dia Grant's got to be upset with himself he was in a position that he could have won this fight and uh, an excellent guillotine there and uh, left his head out, and Suspedis was happy to grab it. And uh, again, back to the drawing board for Dia Grant, but he's got to be a little upset in that position that uh, he was unable to uh, secure this victory. As we look at a replay of the finish here on our featureproductions.ca replay, and uh, Dia Grant with the head kick, and then he was going to come in and shoot. And as the shot happens, he leaves the head exposed. Good arm in, and this was a very purposeful position by Suspedis. He was able to secure the guard, and as soon as he was able to extend his hips and straighten out his body, Dia Grant was only able to tap. It looks like we have our official decision. For that decision, we're going to throw it in the cage to Jay Denance. And now, the Shaw GMC Tough Trucks Hard Knocks 32 official decision brought to you by 
Cruz Custom Homes. The winner by tap out due to guillotine choke at 36 seconds in the third round in the blue corner, Rolando Cepeda. So a win for Rolando Cespedes tonight over Dia Grand Ari. A very competitive fight between two very talented fighters. That was a very, very good fight. I, Dia Grant, I thought, was controlling the majority of that fight. And I think with the takedown in the third round, he was he was winning that fight. Left his neck out, got caught. Great submission by Cespedes. And uh, second time he's been here, I can't wait to have him back. I, he's amazing. So Rolando Cespedes picks up the win tonight with a choke on Dia Graham. Well, that's it for this episode of Hard Knocks Fighting TV. Make sure you check us out online, hardknocksfighting.com, at HK Fighting on Twitter, or like us on Facebook, Hard Knocks Fighting. For everyone here at the Hard Knocks Fighting Championship, including Ari Tobe and myself, Ryan Valentine, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you again soon.